I am going to build the next guitar. The last guitar was an acoustic three string cigar box guitar. It had a piezo under a bridge which was separate from the saddle and it had regular sound holes cut into the body. Uh, the neck went right through the body and came out of the tail as well and that's where the strings were strung to. Uh, I really like that guitar, it's come out really well. Um, I put a piece of wood on as a fretboard, but it's not a fretted guitar, it's a slide guitar. It has quite a high action. Um, while I was building that guitar, I was definitely thinking about the next guitar. The main problem I had was getting another cigar box. After getting hold of the first one off eBay, I went back on eBay and I found this quite old looking cigar box, uh, too small. I found this one which is too small. I found this one, which I love the colours of, again, too small. And then I came up with this one, which is it's big, really big for a cigar box. And I planned to make a guitar out of this cigar box. I had in mind that it would have the same sort of brass fittings as the previous guitar. Um, on the last guitar I didn't get to use this brass hardtail that I was I really like this um, and that would go quite nicely on there it just doesn't do it for me this box isn't gonna build a guitar that I'm gonna want to see every day so I had a think and I took a slightly different approach and I found another cigar box which I'm not going to show you right now I'm gonna save that as a surprise but it means I've changed my plan this is where it's gonna start this piece of it's Wenge um, I bought specially to make the fretboard. I am going to attempt to cut frets and mount fret wire on this, but I need to not mess it up. So that's where this guitar is going to start, with this fretboard. So here is my take on a fret slot cutting jig. Um, I have two long parallel rails into which this piece of fretboard material will sit. I'm going to take this out and I'll put a scrap piece in, the same width. I'll mark on here where I want to cut my fret slots and then these two black 3D printed parts have a slot in it, the same as the kerf wet on my saw. So I can roll that back and forth across there, making a nice parallel cut. And then once I've got deep enough, the saw blade will run into these blocks. These are my sacrificial depth stops. These clip into the outside and I can print these at different depths. When I start marking the top of those, I'll know my slot is deep enough. I need to cut the fret slots. But before I can cut the fret slots, it hadn't occurred to me that I will need to cut the nut because the pieces of bone I have are small enough that they need to actually be recessed into the fretboard at the top here. So once I've prepared the nut, I can say for certain where the top of my fretboard is going to be, and then I can lay out the fret slots, and then I can cut the fret slots. So the first thing I need to do is chop this bone blank down, which I haven't done before. So this is new. I've been told the best way to cut this with is with a hacksaw, but we shall see. Mark the top of that. dimensionals need to be straight across and straight down <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully that's now to length. Yep. That's the first bone blank I've ever shaped into a nut, but I think now that's in place, I can mark out my frets. There we go. That will be my fretboard. I love the colours on this wood. If I can not mess this up, I'm going to be really pleased with this, I think. I'm starting at 17, the bottom of the guitar. I'm going to put a fret in and see if my cut is deep enough. And if not, I'll adjust the guide. This is my fret pressing jig. I have some fret wire and I've cut the 17th slot on my fretboard and I need to push it into place and test the depth of the slot. Okay, that's making contact all the way across. It's nice and straight on there. Three, two, one. Let's see how we did. Not very well. I don't think that slot is deep enough. Okay, so I've cut into both of my depth guides there to make this slot deeper looks reasonably even so let's swap these jigs out again three two one push i have put that fret in that is a good depth one down 16 to go my first prints of these depth stops was a bit of an estimate and i was about between three quarters and half a millimetre out, which is why I've cut into those a little bit, getting the right depth for that first piece of fret wire. I've reprinted those parts, and now I can put in slightly lower depth stops for the rest of the cuts. Switching jigs. The depth is good, but I want to make sure I cut right to the bottom of these slots. If I get this in here for another one, probably not without dressing that first. So my press jig here has got a bit of a lean to it. It's a little bit annoying. Since its entire raison d'etre is to evenly apply all this force, it is a beautiful spring day here in the workshop. And I had a good day yesterday. I got some frets in using the two jigs. Um, both of them needed a few tweaks. These sacrificial blocks that I was using yesterday, they're great, they're working really well, but they are getting pretty chewed up. So these ones I did, I did one, two, three, four, five, six frets on, and they've already got a bit of a slot in, so not a problem. I've printed some new ones. Clip those in, and we're good to go. They take about 20 minutes to come off the prints of these. The pressing jig, I was having more of an issue with. Uh, the big block I have mounted under here that slid up and down, um, pr proving to be more of a hindrance than I expected. So I've taken that off and replaced it with a single fixed piece. I've also lowered the pivot point here to be the right height for my fretboard. 
and now I have the end of a broken pull cue actually. Um, I've leveled it off so that it's nice and parallel on one side and now I'm hopeful to get a much more even press. There we go, that's five slots. Put some wiring. Too much wenge dust in my coffee. Oh. I'm really getting through this fret wire. I hope I've bought enough. Otherwise I shall end up with a guitar without some frets, which would be a bit frustrating. Okay, and press. So that either went in or it bent. I think it went in. I bet my arm is blocking the shot every time I do that. So, it's not idiot proof, but it is working okay. I'm very pleased with how these frets are coming out. Probably need to dress these before I can put any more in. So, last five slots to cut. I'm going to use a third set of these little sacrificial blocks. It may seem a bit extravagant using three sets of these just to cut this one fretboard but printing all three sets has cost me less than a dollar so I'm not too worried about it as an extravagance. There we go, fret slots cut. So this jig is now oh, a massive bumblebee has come to join me. Don't get comfy down there, mate. I'm going to have to evict you. There we go. Out she goes. Well, I think my fret cutting jig has been a reasonable success so far. Well, this is a fairly classic example of where I tend to make mistakes. The last thing I had to do today was to drill some holes for the marker dots. Um, I used a piece of wood the same thickness to get the depth set. I marked them out on the board and I've drilled them at 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 because I'm an idiot and I didn't check that I'd marked the right fret. Um, it's not really recoverable now. I'm just going to have to put marker dots on the wrong fret for this guitar, which is a shame. But this was the piece I had to make the fretboard. So other than that, it's looking pretty good. one of these I didn't get glue right to the end of here that was my mistake so let's not make that one twice this guitar is very much not going how I planned but we'll keep working on it started the headstock I need to glue the pieces on the side of the headstock later, but first I've realised that I need to put a quite a large recess on the tail of this piece for the lid of my box. 
and then I'm going to cut another piece to reinforce that and act as the shoulder. So the last headstock I made, I made like this, with a thinnish piece of wood sandwiched in between other pieces of wood. When I cut the shape of the headstock last time, I cut almost all the way through both of these outside layers. So this time, rather than gluing those on the outside like that, I'm actually going to trim the headstock inwards to a point, and then glue these onto there to make a triangle shape which I hope will look all right. Okay, so we're in Clamp City right now. I've glued and clamped the bottom of the guitar here. This block will go inside the cigar box. It might need a bit of trimming. Up at the headstock end, there's the wenge and then the sapili on the side of the white oak. And I've got a plan here I'm going to take this part down to be level with these, which will make it 16mm and perfect for the tuners. My plan is to do a kind of stylish little cut here, cut here. You'll see when it works. If it works, it's going to look great. If it doesn't, I can hide the evidence. Uh, every time I do this, I think if I had a thickness planer, it would be so easy to make these blocks nice and square and parallel. Um, and I get much better results from trying to do these thin strips, for example. Uh, either way, it's going okay today. Okay. Ah, my glue's coming undone.
it's uh, time to start shaping the neck and I'm going to take the bulk of the material off the corners here with the router again I'm going to try and use the freehand router with a half inch, quarter inch, quarter inch round over bit I want to take this profile down so that my little template runs smoothly along and the way to do that is with the Shinto rasp So I've reached a point for the first time in a couple of days where I'm actually really pleased with how this is coming on. I've done most of the shaping and sanding on the guitar neck and I'm really liking it. Um, I learnt some lessons from last time, from the first one I did where I left marks in it by mistake and I've gone over it again and again with different grades of sandpaper until I keep finding all the small nicks that aren't immediately obvious. Right, the fretboard is gluing up. The next bit of work out here will be starting work on the cigar box. So it's time for me to introduce the star of the proceedings, the cigar box I am most happy with. Ta-da! It's this wonderful Lamborghini orange sides and this sort of black lacquered top. It's quite chunky. It's got thick sides not particularly deep and a super thick top which is causing me some some issues So I have to plan these projects with the fact in mind that my woodworking skills are still pretty rudimentary. For example I knew that making the cutout for this pickup in this lid with this easy to chip black paint was going to be a tall order for me. If I supplement my rudimentary woodworking skills with my 3D printing skills then I can model and print a fascia to hide the evidence. So one of the problems I have is that odd little parts like these little mesh covered grommets are pretty hard to come by here in the UK even with, with things like eBay. So I did find a company that was selling these gold ones but of course it's not gold that I want. So I'm going to try, I've got a few of these, I'm going to try and um, give it a coat of primer in black. I'm going for an unconventional placement of sound hole here. I'm going for the bottom side of the box. So we've reached probably my favourite part of these projects and it's putting on this wood finish. Well the oak looks great as normal. The sapili looks beautiful, a sort of sunburst. The wenge is a little darker than I would have liked. I'm starting the fit up on the lid of the guitar now. I've recessed holes for the potentiometers because the lid of the box is quite thick. So I've 3D printed this little um, load spreader which the potentiometers can sit against. And now I'm going to fit this pickup. It's 
It's really cold out here today and it's making me a bit clumsy. Oh, I'm having another one of those days where everything's a bit of a nightmare. I needed to recess a little bit into the body here, the body block, to make room for the potentiometers. I didn't do careful measuring, I just eyeballed it. And as a result of my clumsiness, I chopped away material, I'll cut myself, I chopped away material where I'm going to want to put screws in to hold the bridge. So then I have to spend time chiseling this bit out so that I can glue some wood back in again. Which is a bit tedious, but it is at least salvaged. And here we go. With the exception of the strings and the saddle, the box is now complete. Got our knobs, our pickup, got our sound hole, jack, strap buttons. So we have string holes through the saddle, through the lid, through the body. We've then countersunk and recessed these finials for the string nuts. And we have holes in the bottom of the box which should line up with these. So we can now get ready to assemble everything. There's not a lot more I can do until I've put a couple more coats of oil on the neck and the fretboard. But I am worrying about my spots. Have I cut the holes deep enough? Am I filling the holes with finish? Are these gonna fit? So, just to put myself at ease, I feel like I should put at least one of these in. Hmm. Well, it fits in the hole, that's always a good sign. A little bit deep, if anything. any way of retrieving the ones that are too deep. Going super glue fishing. What could possibly go wrong? Well I did not expect that would work. So this one seems quite firmly fixed in. Let's put a drop of glue in the bottom of there. does not seem to want to come back out. Feels like that dust is going to be quite a pain to clean off. The guitar is now assembled. Headstock, neck, fretboard, body, pickups, saddle. And uh, in my mind, I was pretty much done. I was just starting to do some reading about putting the strings on when I came across the instructions for the nut. It only really needs three slots in it, but it turns out these slots are supposed to be quite particular. They're going to set the spring spacing, the, the action height, and whether or not I have a nice, what do they call it, takeoff from this part here. And I, don't, I just don't know how forgiving this part is going to be. Maybe I can just hack some slots in and it'll be fine, but um, it would be a shame to, to not get it right. I want, oh my word, uh, A, D and G, red, black, green. I kind of wish you could get black strings. Anyone ever seen black strings? 
I'm quite excited. I'm pleased that the box has gone together. I guess my enthusiasm is a little bit um, muted by the fact I've got this extra work to do on this nut that I don't think I was prepared for. Ooh. Well, that's very promising. Well, that's a start. So I've marked out my string position here. One string there, one string there, one string there. That's the same width as it is at the saddle. The top of that ruler is the minimum height that I want my the bottom of my strings to be to avoid fret bars. I think I put the grooves in first. And then we go for the flat. I have made my first nut from a blank. Um, yeah, action's all right. I don't, I don't think I dare go any lower right now. I have noticed I've got a buzz at the fifth fret on the B string, sorry, not the B string, uh, the high G. This fret here, it's a little bit high. Anyway. I don't have any particularly high-tech tools for sorting this out, but what I've done, um, I printed out a little uh, protector to stop me dinting the wood either side, I've taped that on. So if I put this bar on, which is reasonably flat, I can still feel a rock at that point. So I might try this in terms of grinding the middle of that to be level. Of course, that might mean I've done it too low. Okay. I'll string that back up and see if that has improved. I'm not going to even attempt to um to recrown that thread, that thread. Okay, let's go on a quick tour of this guitar following the strings. So to start with, we have locking closed back tuning pegs. The strings come from there, through my custom nut, down this wenge fretboard, over this mini humbucker, into this hardtail saddle over the rollers that I've put holes through so that the strings dive straight through the body of the guitar into oh, bit fluff there into some fenules that you can't see black on black into some fenules there there we go thank you for watching and stay safe